In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to use the buttons on your drawing tablet or shortcut controller to streamline your digital art workflow and save you time. If you have a drawing tablet, it may come with express keys. These are buttons that are built into the device. They can be customized to perform keyboard shortcuts and execute commands within your digital art application or any other application. Rather than express keys, you might have a shortcut controller which can do the same thing, such as a stream deck or a loop deck. I'll be focusing primarily on express keys, but all of this advice can be applied to a shortcut controller as well. I'm using the Cintiq 27 QHD Touch, which comes with the Wacom Express Key Remote. If I open the Wacom Tablet Properties, I can click on the Express Key Remote or whichever device that I want to configure, then look for the touch ring settings. Here's where I can choose what the touch ring is going to do. It's very important that you make note of which application that you're assigning commands to. By default, all other is selected, which is a global setting for all applications. That global setting can be overridden by adding specific applications. Once you choose a specific application, you can have different shortcuts for each individual application. To add an application, click on the plus button. I'll choose my specific art application so that the functions I program will apply only to that. Then I'll click on that application to activate it. I'll set the first touch ring mode to auto scroll slash zoom. You may also need to adjust the sensitivity of the touch ring. If the auto scroll slash zoom setting doesn't work, you might need to look up what the shortcut is for zooming in your specific art application and add that to the touch ring as a keyboard shortcut. Next, I'll return to my art application, use the touch ring to select the correct mode, and then rotate around the wheel to zoom. Again, I can make this more or less sensitive if I need to. Next, I'm going to go to the Express Keys tab and program the very first button on my Express Key remote to a keyboard keystroke. If necessary, I'll press the clear button, then spacebar to enter that as the new keystroke. I'll name it pan and apply it. Now if I minimize my Wacom tablet properties and go back to my art application, I can use my express key remote to activate commands while I'm painting without having to touch the keyboard or hunt around in the menus. I'll paint a few strokes and then press the key that I set to spacebar to pan my canvas. Another helpful command is to fit your canvas on the screen. If you look up the shortcut for that, you can add it to an express key. Zooming the canvas to 100% is another one you might want to add. 100% means the canvas is not zoomed in or zoomed out. Rotating the canvas might be useful as an express key. You'll need to look up the shortcut for that in your specific art application. This is best used with a touch ring. I can program up to three bidirectional commands to this particular touch ring. Next, you may want to add the modifier keys, such as Shift, Control, and Alt, since they are used quite frequently to invoke a variety of modes and commands. For example, holding Shift while the brush tool is selected might enable the straight line mode. Holding Alt invokes the color sampling tool. This means these modifiers can be used to control several commands. By choosing these for your express keys, you'll be able to cover a lot of shortcuts because these modifiers can be used to control so many different commands. Another useful shortcut is clearing a layer. This is usually a keystroke of delete or backspace. Hiding the UI can help conserve space for your canvas. The shortcut for this is a keystroke of tab. If your drawing tablet doesn't already have a dedicated switch or button to enable and disable touch, then you might want to set one of the express keys to do that. Next, we can add the brush tool since it's something you'll be selecting a lot. If you prefer to have it set to an express key, you can do that. The shortcut for this is usually a keystroke of B. Transforming is something you'll be doing often as well. You can usually invoke this with Control T or maybe just T. Undo and redo are useful commands. You can assign these to the touch wheel or your express keys. Undo is usually Control Z and redo is either Control Shift Z or Control Y. Deselect is yet another handy command to access quickly. This will deselect an active selection. The shortcut for this is usually Control D, but in the case of Krita, it's Control Shift A. Saving is a very important command and one you'll be using often. It can be difficult to remember to save, so it could be nice to have it as a dedicated express key, though you'd want to take care to not press it by accident. 
Your pen may also have buttons that you can assign shortcuts to. These buttons are usually located near the tip of the pen. Typically, pens have one, two, or three buttons. To give you an example, you could program one of these buttons to act as the eraser, allowing you to erase by holding down the pen button. There is a default erase mode, but you might need to look up the eraser shortcut for your specific art application. I have a reference video about erasing if you want to learn more. Right-clicking can be necessary to access a lot of commands in your art application. I like to set one of my pen buttons to this to make it more convenient to access. The shortcut for resizing my brush is another one I like to add to my pen. This shortcut varies from one application to another. It's usually one or more modifiers such as Control, Shift, or Alt. By holding this button, I can drag my pen to resize my brush visually. You can also resize the brush in increments using the bracket keys. You can assign this to a couple of express keys or the touch ring. You may want to adjust the touch ring sensitivity. After adding so many shortcuts to your express keys or a shortcut controller, it might get confusing which keys do what. A shortcut controller might have a built-in display, and if so, you can use text, icons, and color to help you distinguish one shortcut from another. If you don't have that option, then you might consider putting some removable colored stickers on your device to help you remember where the commands are located. It will take some time and experimentation to determine which tools and commands you use frequently enough to justify adding them to a shortcut button. Don't worry if it takes you a while to find the right combination of shortcuts that works best for you. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching.